Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Kimp of the Limp, and I'm here with another preview for Headquarters World War II that is getting ready to come out uh, from Slytherin Games. It is coming out here in April. I believe it's April 13th. No, April 11th. It's 13 days away. This game is no, it's, it's, it's right there. Uh, there is still a, a demo available on Steam, I do believe. Yep, still showing up as available. So if you want to check out the demo that is open right now to everyone, uh, by all means, go check that out. I did get a, uh, a preview code that gave me just a little more access than uh, the demo gives. I got to try out some of the other factions and I hate it. Uh, I missed the date on it because uh, it actually ends. My, my preview ended yesterday and I thankfully did get uh, some time with the game, but I forgot that it ended so quickly. So now I don't get to play it anymore. And I'm like, oh, I want to play it more. Oh, so bad. Uh, but this game is definitely tickling my pickle. I am loving my time with this so far. Uh, I talked about it about a year ago when I first heard about it and saw what they were working on. And I was really excited from the, the preview images that I'd seen of gameplay. And I will tell you, after my time with this, I am even more excited to get dug into the game because it has a lot to offer. So just in case you don't know, the game is a tactical skirmish game where it's based on a grid-based system, so squares instead of hexes, but the map is gridded out and your units are going to move across these squares, right? So they'll have so many movement points or the range will be four squares, five squares, however far, right? That's how the system operates. And you're going to use these to try to accomplish whatever your objective is. And the gameplay that you're gonna be seeing in the background, I was playing as the British and I was trying to secure a couple of bridges ahead of the beach landings, right? So that they could control the town and get reinforcements, link up uh, Omaha and Gold Beaches and allow the, the attack to continue. There is three campaigns going on here. We've got the US, we've got the British and the Germans. Previous video I had shown you guys was the Germans. So you got to see the, the Germans repelling the allies as they came up the beaches. Go check out that video if you haven't, obviously. Uh, but in that game, I had a whole lot of fun because I ended up having this huge firing line there at the end where I was just, ah, laying waste to everything. But the cool part about the campaigns is they almost interlock with each other, right? They are operating on uh, same maps. So you kind of get to get to, to see the campaign from different points of view, right? In the first allied mission for the US, they're trying to come up the beaches. The Germans, they're trying to push them back down onto the beaches. The British, they're fighting on what would be the second campaign map for the Germans. And it's their first campaign map where they're trying to control the bridges. So the second mission for the Germans is where they're trying to repel where the Allies had pushed up. So you see how it all starts to tie into each other. So you kind of get to see how the war played out for all of the different factions. I ended up spending more time with the British because I figured a lot of people will probably cover the U.S. and plenty are going to cover the Germans. Not as many go for the British. So I wanted to spend a little time with the British to see how their gameplay was uh, shaping up. And it's just great. It is absolutely a fun game, especially if you were into uh, tactical games. This is definitely one you don't want to miss. And speaking of things not to miss, I am going to have another video after this one that gets uploaded where it is the entirety of the British mission, just so you can see how it all played out with the Germans coming in. Uh, just a forewarning, I did accidentally screw up when I was poking around at that, and I accidentally set the game to super easy. Uh, one of the options, speaking of difficulty of the game, is that you can have it super easy to super hard or you can customize and there's actually sliders. So you can adjust uh, the different factors. You can increase enemy damage, reduce it, accuracy, reduce accuracy, uh, put it in whatever direction you want. I accidentally think what I believe happened is I clicked on very easy and then I clicked on custom, but custom kept those settings. And I think I forgot to flick it back over to just normal, 
you know, veteran and ended up playing the game on that because I started out my mission. I'm like, why am I just ruffle stomping the Germans? Like I could not miss. And the Germans were just having a hard time hitting my guys. So make sure you don't make that mistake. Don't don't set the game too easy. But on the bright side, that does uh, hit one of the points I wanted to make, which is the game is beginner friendly. If you don't have as much experience with board games, this one you can easily jump into. You don't have to be a master tech uh, tactician by any means. You can adjust the difficulty down so it's not as punishing. But if you want a hard, gritty experience, you can definitely crank those numbers up too. When it comes to the gameplay itself, one of the things that stood out to me is definitely the graphics. The graphics and the sound, uh, really, they are both excellent top notch, especially in the fact that the battlefield is moldable. It, it changes as you have your gameplay going on, right? So if you have flamethrowers burn in a building, it can catch fire, tanks will explode, uh, their wrecks will stay there wherever they are, becoming added terrain. Uh, buildings, if you have an air strike come in, boom, 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 boom. Buildings can be rubbled and, and taken out. So it's going to change as you do certain things across the map. You know, machine gun fire is not going to do a whole lot, but if you call down a huge artillery strike, boom, it's going to level everything and you're going to know that an artillery strike happened there. And it is so beautiful. I got to say, when it comes to tactical games and, and war games, a lot of times graphics aren't something that we see heavily invested in. Uh, like Combat Mission, for example, I've been spending a lot of time with that game. Uh, the engine is older, the graphics aren't great, but the gameplay is really, really good. And it's what stood the test of time because so many people are still heavily invested in that game. But we understand we're not gonna get the, the best graphics out of it. This one, no, you are getting good graphics. It looks great. And the camera is panable. So you can move it around however you want. Zoom in, zoom out, spin it around, get uh, good close in views back out. And it even has the, uh, the kill shot kill cam going on sometimes. And it's not every time, uh, but a lot of times if you're doing things like sniper fire or artillery uh, coming or uh, artillery shots coming in, Boom, it'll zoom in and it'll show it to you kind of like you would see in the uh, the old XCOM games, right? When it would show you those gruesome kills. And just like I said, the the sound for the game is great as well. It's it's heavy, it's meaty, it's chunky, you feel it. It it feels the way it's supposed to feel. It's got a good heavy feeling when the explosions or tanks are firing, machine guns are going off, bazookas are firing. All of it sounds the way you really think a game like that should sound. It doesn't sound hollow or light. It sounds heavy, like you're really putting some rounds down range. And again, something else I like about this is the fact that uh, the game can be played pretty much however you want to play it because there are multiple different options to kind of adjust things towards your play style. Uh, one of the first things I'll address is the skill system. So you will actually build up like commander points, right? And you have three different skill trees you can invest those in. Uh, armor, infantry, and then artillery. And as you put points into the system, you'll gain certain bonuses. Like infantry, for example, is a skill I decided to invest in, where as you move down, it starts reducing the extra movement points you would spend to move into rough or, or forested terrain. So now your units, instead of being bogged down as they move through that more difficult terrain, they can get a little bit farther. Or maybe you put the points towards your armor where they don't trigger enemy reaction fire. That's huge. That makes it to where your armor can move much more freely along the battlefield without having to worry about boom, suddenly triggering an enemy shot that goes right up their tailpipe, blows them up. And it's the same thing with the artillery. Now, all three trees are fairly extensive. Uh, I am unsure exactly how many points you're going to get at this time. I'm fairly certain from what I've seen, because you don't get a whole lot of points between the missions, that you can probably specialize in a tree or get a little bit from all three of the trees or maybe pick a couple that you like and work well with but you're not going to be able to fill up all three trees you are going to have to be selective on where you're putting your skills 
Also, when it comes to playing the game your way, I had mentioned this previously, but you have your, your core forces. So as you go on through your campaign, you'll have different forces that get added for maybe that mission, but you have your, your core group that is going from mission to mission and you can spend points that you accrue for completing secondary or primary objectives to modify those units. Now, one of the things I found that worked really, really well for me as the British were my snipers. I ended up positioning my snipers at each one of those bridges that I needed to main, uh, maintain control of, and they just laid waste with three reactions for each one of them anytime the Germans popped their heads up. Sniper's ready. My snipers were just picking them off. Boom, 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 boom. Left, right, and center. So that made me want to go, okay, I want some more snipers. My flamethrowers never got stuck in. And I find that flamethrowers, while great, they'll crush an enemy unit. They have to get right on top of them to do that. And I like reaching out and touching someone so I could adjust my core forces and switch that flamethrower out for an extra sniper unit. Or I could invest in something else. Maybe I want to have an extra Sherman or maybe I want a Churchill. Maybe I want some more paratroopers. It really is up to you. And then you can add extra things to like infantry. You can add trucks to help them move around faster across the battlefield or even upgrade them to things like half-track troop carriers. So now you've got just that little extra bit of firepower being added to the map. So I see that as something I'm definitely going to invest in and play with as I go through these campaign missions and switch my forces out. And plus, you kind of get to see what your next mission is going to be. For example, the next mission for the British is going to be trying to take control of this harbor, right? And use that as a, a beachhead to help offload all the supplies and units and troops and people that are coming ashore. So they need to maintain certain facilities and keep the Germans from destroying them. Knowing what the mission is, basically what my objectives are, I can look at that and decide what units are going to most fit my mission objective and then adjust my forces accordingly. I was trying to think if there's anything I'm going to ding the game for. And really, I can't come across much off the top of my head. Uh, in the previous time that I had with the game, I did notice a little glitch that had a little stutter with the gameplay and especially with the, uh, the videos, the kill cams. There would almost be this little bit of a pause right when the uh, the kill cam action was going on, but that's been taken care of. I did not have that happen at all with the second build that I was getting to play with. So obviously they have corrected any of the little bugs that they're coming across. And if they're working on very, very minor bugs like that, like a very slight stutter that didn't affect gameplay, never crashed, never anything like that, then it tells me that they probably got the game pretty well tuned. The only thing I can think of is what's the cost going to be for the game? I don't know. I anticipate this one being probably $39.99. That's a, a fair price. If they're above that, then they're, they're, they're above what they should be asking for the game. Anything $40 and under, they're, they're perfectly fine. It's a, a fair asking price. It is ripe for DLC. Right. The adding extra campaigns, extra factions. And I fully anticipate them doing this uh, because they have the U.S., British and German factions in here. They can easily add in the Soviets. They can add in the French. They could add the Polish. They can add whoever into the game that they want to. Uh, so I not only see them creating this DLC, but I want them to. I think it would be excellent for them to add more campaigns to the game because I've been having so much fun with a little bit of the campaigns that I've been able to experience now. 
To be fair, though, I would not expect DLCs like that anytime soon because campaign missions are going to be more intensive on their end to get made versus adding in extra factions that could just be used in the skirmish, which, like I said, there is skirmish. It does have six different maps that you can use and you can play up to two uh, 2v2 uh, against other players in those skirmish maps. But yeah, right now, all I can say is I'm very excited for a couple of weeks to go by and for headquarters to come out officially. Uh, the game is just shaping up nicely. It's been great so far. The little bit that I've experienced of it, I can't wait to experience everything and all the different units and the tanks and ah, everything that gets added to it. Uh, it's anyone who's into tactical games. Yeah, put this one on your radar. It's absolutely worth getting and it's not even wait for a sale. No, go ahead and get it day one. You'll be happy. No questions. At least based on everything I've seen so far, absolutely, it is a day one buy. But all right, that is going to be it for me on this preview. Like I said, stay tuned. I will upload the video of my match uh, with the British. That way you guys can see some of their gameplay. I would upload more gameplay, but like I said, my code's run out of time, so I can't uh, show any more of that just yet, but I'll show more later. Uh, and... Bear with me. Like I said, that first mission was a little scotch easier than I uh, originally anticipated or originally planned it to be, but that was my mistake. That's not a game problem. That's me dumb thumbing and clicking on uh, the wrong option. All right, that's going to be it for me. Y'all take care. I'll catch you in the next one.